Hey guys, Jermaine Morgan here, and you're watching Grooves and Motivation. Listen, I got a question for you. Is your practice time boring? I'm talking to you bass players. Well, we're going to talk about it today in today's live, so make sure you stay tuned. All right? Hey, are you a bass player? Let's be honest, aren't you tired of feeling like you're in the same place while everybody else around you is progressing? I have a solution. Trust me, I understand where you're coming from. Years ago, I used to deal with the same thing as it related to my playing. You see, over the years, I've developed a lot of different bass riffs and bass licks. And I've been able to put them in a course and to show you exactly how I do it. I'm not gonna hold it off to myself. I'm gonna show you exactly what it is I'm doing so you can keep up with the competition. So if you're interested in improving and actually becoming the bass player you always dreamed of, check out the Riffs and Licks Library. Wake up, wake up, wake up, everybody. <laughs> it's early in the morning here. And so I know some of you guys are trying to roll over and get that last few minutes of sleep, especially you school teachers and all that that are off for the summer. So we're here this morning. I wanted to uh, get on here and talk about practice time or more so play uh, a little bit of stuff this morning for you guys and, uh, who are dealing with uh, boring practice. <laughs> I wanted to kind of deal with that a little bit this morning so I, I, I pulled up some things that I wanted to play to as we get into that uh, and um, as my stragglers come in if you're watching this in the replay be sure to let me know where you're watching from uh, I always love to see where in the world everybody is watching so that's always dope to go back through the comments and see this if you're watching live be sure to drop that in the comment section as well but I'm gonna start playing uh, through some of these tracks and good morning everybody that's already jumped on I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, start playing through a few of these tracks get my fingers warmed up start y'all off with some uh, I don't know what I want to start with this morning let's start with uh, okay I got an idea I'm gonna change my bass I'm gonna change my bass I'm gonna pull this fender out Steven what's up man Great to be seen and not viewed, my brother. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think I'm going to start with this uh, contemporary stuff. That's what I'll do. So this is a uh, contemporary gospel uh, grooves that I'll be playing here. All right, I'll talk more about this later. Mark, bonjour. Good morning to you, sir. Uh, whatever time it is for you there welcome 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 all right so let's jump into some of this stuff um let's see what we have here all right i'll play i'll play to some of this stuff and uh some of this stuff i haven't touched at all but we're gonna have some fun this morning you you were basically witnessing a live practice and exploring some ideas to all of this stuff here so let me see what key this is in all right, let me check the tuning on this really, really quick. Everybody's well this morning as I check the tuning on this bass here. It's always a good idea before you kick off everything to make sure you're in tune. Leo, good morning to you, sir. Always a great idea to make sure you're in tune. Because I can just be in play like five minutes ago and bump the bass or something like that and you're not aware of it. I've had that happen before. Somebody bump up against you like you're live somewhere and you just tune your bass and you walked off stage for a second and come back, pick it up, start playing, and one of those strings is way off. And you're like, wait, something, something ain't right. So it's always good to check your tuning. 
a little uh, elementary tip for some guys out there. All right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking about the uh, the name of this track is. I'll try to give the name of these tracks. If I don't give the name of it, ask me what it is, and I'll tell you. Um, but all of these songs that I'm gonna go through today are original tunes, and they are available. And I'll talk more about that. All right, let's get into it. Uh, let me see here. So that the name of that tune is everlasting uh it's on the contemporary gospel um bass jam uh it's a bass jam pack that i created for bass players like yourself to jam to to keep from making your practice boring i'll go ahead and drop the link so at any point you want to learn more about any of the tracks i'm playing you can go in and click this link and uh learn more about it um here so i'll put it I put it in a live chat. Let's see who else we got. Uh, there you go. I put it in a live chat there. We got Charlie. Good morning, sir. New York is in the building. All right. Leo said, you've been a great mentor and inspiration to me and other young musicians here in Nigeria. Man, to God be the glory, dude. Thank you so much. Andre, good morning to you, sir. Uh, great day to be living and on this channel. Listen, any day is a great day to be living. You hear me? <laughs> any of them. I'll take any of them. Mark, good morning to you. Uh, I think I already spoke to you, Mark, but hey, it don't hurt to go about a second time, right? Andy, hi, Jermaine. Thank you for your videos. I, I seem stuck uh, at the minute. I have a fair understanding of music theory, but applying them in real-time signatures is my problem. How can I improve this, please? Andy, let me make mention of this before I go too far. I will be doing... 
uh, an unlock your sound challenge for anybody who's interested I've been talking if you're on my emailing list you've probably seen several emails about this but if you're not on my emailing list I don't want you to get left out of this because this is gonna be sweet it's gonna be three days of training where I'm gonna talk answer questions for uh, especially people who, who are VIP members they get to ask questions via zoom and uh, I'm gonna be teaching uh, for three days in this um, virtual experience unlock your sound challenge uh, I'll try to grab a link for that as well and drop it because I don't want to forget to mention that and then I do it I didn't know you had something that was good I always get something like that so I want to make sure I make mention of that before I get too far into this uh, live so any of you guys that have questions like that that I know I can't really spend the time uh, been to sorry about that I just I went to grab this link and it started playing um, but any of the questions that you have like that I know I don't have time to get to today I want to make sure that um, you know about this so that you know you can have the opportunity to ask me your question and we can deal with uh, some of that stuff there all right so who else am I missing there um, Andy that I got you all right so Steven says yes that track will keep you on your toe yeah man <laughs> you got to think uh, well once you learn, I put it like this, once you learn the format, and I do teach the format in the uh, instructional that I put in the link there, once you learn the format of all of these tracks, I think you can pretty much kind of go wherever you want to go with them, and that's what I plan to do today, uh, just play around with a lot of this stuff and have some fun. Uh, Emmanuel, I like the name, sir, my, my first name is Manuel as well. So, good day from Italy, yes sir, man, welcome. Uh, Canny Lester, good morning, Perry George is in the building. Yes, sir. He's a all the way. I bring greetings to you by way of Perry, Georgia. All right. Nguyen, uh, I think I'm saying it correct. Good morning to you. All right. Greetings from uh, Ghana. Okay. Ghana's in the building. Good morning to you. Not really sure how to break out of the pentatonic box. Oh, yeah. It is. But it's... <sighs> That's why y'all got to come to this. I'm, I seem excited about it because I am because it's so much stuff that we look over. Like you mentioned the pentatonic box. And I'm not going to get into it because I'll, I'll go into a whole uh, sermon on that. But the pentatonic, there's so many ideas contained within that that I think we overlook because we think it's too, it's too elementary. A lot of people look at that as elementary. And I want to show you how to explore uh, so many different options with that. I, I showed my student, one of my uh, students in a coaching session a few weeks ago, we were talking about just some things adding to the groove and I showed him like eight different ways to use one pentatonic, well, two pentatonic scales, like eight different ways to use it within a matter of about 10 minutes. And so it just kind of unlocked some things for him. So that's, uh, I know what I'm knowing that I know what I'm knowing. <laughs> I know that don't make no sense, but I listen, it's so much stuff I want to share. It's just, as a matter of fact, this is next week. I think it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of next week. Not this week, but next week. So you don't want to miss it. If it's going to be one of them things, I'm like, I tried to tell you. You didn't You didn't come. I was, I was there. So if it only ends up being me and a couple of people in there, they're going to get the juice. So, you know, <laughs> it's on you. All right, so let's play through a few more of these tracks. Um, this one is called Fred Style. This is a really, really fun tune to play. I, uh, by the way, playing on these tracks, this particular group of tracks that I'm playing, uh, is myself doing everything and my uh, good friend Jarris Harge playing the drums. J uh, Jarris is a phenomenal keyboardist and drummer, uh, but he just played the drums on this stuff here. So it's a really fun track to play. It feels so when I say Fred Style, you're gonna know exactly what I'm talking about because it feels like Fred, like Fred stuff.
these tracks I'm goofing off on it right now but you can like there's so many different things that you can kind of play around with and I think people get <clears throat> in their practice time speaking of like how is your practice time practice time does not have to be boring like I'm literally practicing right now I'm goofing off but I am practicing maybe not to the uh, to the extent where it seems super super technical but I think we look at practice as something that has to be super boring. We have to be spinning it on. Well, my, my teacher or my coach or whoever told me to just work on skills and doing it. Yeah, all of that stuff is important. But I think what we miss, a lot of us miss in practice that we actually do. Here, here, let me let me give this. I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go off the, the beaten path for a second and, and rant for a second. <laughs> Here's what I think really good practice comes in. For the musicians that you admire, they have these things where just say, if I'm playing, let's say church, because I know I have a lot of church musicians that follow me. Just say, if we're at church, and just say church is over with, or it could still be going on, but we go into a jam, pretty much musicians go into a jam. Chances are, in that jam moment that could last 30 minutes, you're not going to sit there and play the same thing over and over. You're not you're going to start going over that bass if you're playing bass if you're playing drums and you're going to be trying stuff and some of your most creative ideas happen right there in the moment granted you spend some time in the practice room you come up with some ideas and you're exploring these ideas within the context of the situation or the scenario here here's the thing the reason why i call that like some real good practice not to dismiss what happens in the practice room because that's very very important I'm not taking away any of that, so don't get offended, none of y'all guys. Uh, but in those moments, I think that you're allowed to explore those ideas. You get to hear real time what works, what doesn't work. You kind of get to hear why it doesn't work real time because, and, and not only not because, but not only that, you got a, a set of musicians who are listening there, and if they're your homies, they're gonna give you the look. Uh, of like that was whack or they gonna give you the nod of approval right you know if, if I'm right somebody raise your hand throw the thumbs up let me know I'm right if I'm right you know what I'm saying so if you're playing with a group of cats these are your, your boys these are your, your homies your girls whoever when you do something dope they gonna let you know if it was dope when you do something that wasn't so dope you're gonna get that eyebrow that's like oh okay I, I, I think I see what you meant but that wasn't it doc you know so you get that instant feedback to let you know if you were on the right track or if you maybe need to kind of adjust some things. So playing in something that feels like a live setting to me, and there you go, appreciate it, Kenny. It, 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 it gives you the, the context to know if your ideas are working. And, and furthermore, how to work out your ideas live within that context. And so the reason why I like, uh, well, I created these backing tracks for everybody else because my secret, one of my secrets is I've been doing this for years. Like the stuff that I'm playing to now, I've been doing it for years in terms of what I'm playing to records. I uh, appreciate that, Bernard. Uh, and I see you other guys that's coming and I'll come back to that. But what I'm practicing to just records that other people have played or uh, practicing live in the context of a band setting and just trying out some things that I have been messing with in the practice room. Because you don't get that instant gratification. Appreciate, uh, appreciate it, Andre. Uh, you don't get that instant gratification or that instant uh, feedback that you would get pl uh, playing in front of people. And then knowing if you can really execute this at a speed. So if you've been sitting there with a metronome, you started, you know, you go, you know, uh, as I'm just playing a, a major pentatonic. And you're just doing it to a metronome over and over again it you're going to get really sweet and really fast with cleaning that line up but are you getting good with putting it in the context of a groove now if i took that whole thing and like i'm playing this groove that i just played with the fred thing i don't know if it'll work just well i know but just saying if this is new to me i wouldn't know if this worked 
uh, yet until I try it and see where I can put this thing at and does it work? Does it sound good? You know what I'm saying? And with this, it gives me the opportunity. Let's see, let's play it again. All right, for just for the few of y'all who do this from time to time when I'm live, you grab your bass and start playing as well, which I love that, by the way. Uh, I'm in the key of C minor. It's E flat major if you want to think of that. So I know I couldn't play this, you know, over that uh, that minor, because that's C major, right? But I maybe I could try. So it, it, it's it's kind of going back and forth between major and minor. Uh, da, na, 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 na. Right, it starting major. Da, na, 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 na. So I guess I could kind of get away with major. And, and, and what I'm doing right now is trying to find out if it will work. That's what I'm doing. I'm asking these questions. Sound like a crazy man having a conversation with myself and figuring out, okay, will it work over this? Let's try it. Let's put it in context and see uh, how can I fit it in. All right, so what I did right there is I just stuck both of them in there. I'm like, all right, let's go for both of them. So I went... So I can get away with uh right. So what I'm doing essentially is uh descending a uh, major pentatonic and I don't finish it all the way off, I slide. Cause the whole thing I'm listening for while I'm playing, I'm trying to listen for where the song is going. I'm listening to the chords. I'm not so caught up in the line that I'm playing that I completely lose the groove in my mind or lose the where it's moving to. One of the things I, I always try to say uh, to my students in these coaching calls and that kind of thing, always you always want to be aware of where the groove is going. Don't get so caught up in your lick that you ain't thinking about where the groove is going no more because that's a train wreck waiting to happen. And it's embarrassing when you do it live in front of thousands of people. You know, I've done it. <laughs> so I'm trying to save y'all some embarrassment. Always keep in mind where the line is going. I know times, uh, at times things happen and we just kind of lose, uh, you know, we just kind of lose sight of what we're doing at the second. But you want to, as much as possible, keep in mind uh, where that groove is going to and, and, and allow your stuff to kind of line up with that. Let's do it again. What I'm doing right now is I'm using the major pentatonic and I'm playing around with it, uh, just seeing how many different ways I can do it. Now, <laughs> for my critics, <laughs> I had somebody come in on one of my videos a few weeks ago. He's like, I like the guy. He's just a little bit too busy for me. <laughs> of course, I couldn't. I, I don't know what the person sound like, but that seems like that fit the bill in terms of how they probably would have sounded by me reading the comments. So y'all forgive me. I have a very vivid imagination so that 
that's what it probably sounds like in my head. A lot of the stuff I do here or in my practice time, I'm experimenting. I'm exploring. Uh, I've taken the limits off of my playing in terms of I got to know if it'll work or if it won't work. So the only way I do that is explore it and try the idea, you know, in, in context. That's the only way I'm going to know if it works. If it's overplaying in this particular moment, it's okay. I, I ain't nobody paying me to do this, right? You know, um, in terms of my practice time. But I know also as a professional how to scale it back. When I'm in a session situation, okay, I, I know how to roll back. And I've tried enough very, here's the key. I'm giving y'all too much right now, truth be told, because you got to come to this Unlike Your Sound Challenge to get some more of this. But uh, <clears throat> here's the key. I think um, putting this stuff in the context and trying the different variations of it is going to let you know what works. And if you do that enough over enough different grooves, you start to come up with a very extensive vocabulary of ideas over time. The more you do it and the more you push yourself out of that comfort zone, stop worrying about that person in your ear, especially if you grew up like I did, quartet, uh, where people will tell you, oh, man, that's that too much. You, 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 you Like, stop, stop, stop doing that. Because if you limit yourself to what people are talking about or what people are saying, you'll be stuck in this box with the purist of, well, the bass can only do this and it can only be, you can only have four strings. You can only, all these things that you can only, don't let other people put their limitations on you. Because that could be one of the main things that's keeping you stuck. All right, let's go through some of these uh, some of these comments. Uh, I'm having fun, y'all. I hope y'all having fun. I'm having a lot of fun with this right now. Um, Aaron said, "Yep, that's that's Fred Hammond for sure." <laughs> Appreciate that, man. Uh, Jesse, what's up, man? Mark Williams, thank God for you willing to help others get better. I pray that Yahweh continues to bless you and your family. I receive it. Popeye. Uh, let's see. Um, Hi, Jermaine. Please, are the backing tracks online like that? How can I get such samples? Kindly help me. Yeah, I put the link in this. Um, I actually put the link in this, um, in this live here. And I'll put it up when I post this. If you're watching this in the replay, just look in the description. It's probably already there if you're watching it in the replay that is but if you're watching it live i put the link right here uh in the chat so if you go to if you scroll up and see the uh the link with the all uh, the, the base jam packs the jermainmorgan.net slash base jam packs you can find the link to just get the the packs uh themselves with like six it's like six songs per pack and those songs come with the sheet music and the tab if you need that extra help but if you're a person that like look you got to walk me through this whole progression because i have no clue what you're playing sweet i i specialize in that and i created an instructional with each of i think i have like man it's so it's it's like five or six of these jam packs on my website that i've created now and i'm, I'm gonna be creating more uh, of different types of styles of music um but in particular the majority of them are gospel that i have right now um, and I have uh, several styles of gospel that you can go there and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing and all the stuff that I'm talking about with the uh, instructional is, is right there. A lot of that stuff in terms of how to get through the groove uh, so you can navigate it and come up with your own ideas. I went and did the work and broke all of that down for you. So, yes, this is definitely available uh, exclusively on my website. This is not available uh, part of I had to I have a ton of free backing tracks here on youtube but these get a little bit more in depth uh with the instrumentation and all that kind of stuff it cost me money to produce it and i think it's worth for you i think it's worth the investment because as you can hear i'm coming up with all kind of stuff uh just in my own practice time uh letting y'all sneak in and hear some stuff but y you can see just some different things you can kind of work into your own practice just by using something that feels live that's the the plus side of playing with something as opposed to just only always practicing with the metronome having something that feels more live you getting a real feel of a band you're hearing the drummer do feels and it's like all right let me anticipate there's some other things i want to mention let me anticipate what this drummer is going to do right here oh man i didn't even think to do that because if it's just a a simple drum pattern then you don't think outside of the box but if a drummer is like pushing when i say pushing like he's really growing dynamically 
it's making you think outside of your normal like how would i approach this it, it, it makes you think a little different right um floyd top of the morning sir all is well here mj2 right on uh aaron says you can probably pin the links to the top you you know what i probably can do that um here's what i can do um because let me see here let me see here i gotta find it man add to the broadcast there we go how about that i'll put that right there for a little bit a little minute where y'all can see it and i'll take it off in just a little while but so y'all can see where to go and get those jam packs there it is all right so let's play through another one i'm, I'm having a lot of fun are y'all enjoying this are y'all en enjoying um this talk this this plan i know it's slightly different from my usual grooves and motivation but are y'all enjoying this let me know if you're not you know i'll go ahead and jump off of this move to something else let me know give me a thumbs up let me know you're actually enjoying this you're getting something from it are you picking up what i'm what i'm putting down if you will <laughs> all right so while y'all figuring out if you like it or not i'm gonna pull up another track here this is we've been doing these more upbeat songs and i'm, I'm gonna pull up something that's a little bit more mid-tempo this is still part of the contemporary gospel uh jam pack that i created right here um yeah harry says hey jermaine i've been listening to a lot of anthony jackson and constantly the thing that stands out to me is his articulation what advice would you have for articulation that's a loaded conversation but i guarantee I, i'll get to some of that <laughs> i'm gonna keep sending y'all to the same thing I'll get to some of that in terms of uh, unlock your sound challenge if you want. Because uh, the only reason I say that, I'm not trying to blow off you guys' question, but uh, some of that stuff, I just don't have the time in this live to really dig into it and talk about. Because, uh, I mean, we'd have to get specific. I, I To better answer your question, I'd need more detail. And I don't know if I want to spend the time today getting that detail into one question. I think that's a really, really great question. But I think I could better serve you there or in a, in a one on one type situation, if that makes sense. Because uh, that, that kind of is slightly off of what I'm talking about right now. Um, let's see here. All right. So we're getting some thumbs up to say they are enjoying it. So I'll keep going uh, and keep keep it moving. So let's see here. This is a mid tempo CCM. Uh, here we go. I don't know what key this is in. I think I know. I remember.
One more. enough <laughs> that's probably one of my favorite tracks off of this uh that particular jam pack it, it's it's so fun to play as you can see uh and it's so many ideas that you can come up with playing through something like that and i think when we limit ourselves to um just the basics you know I mean that's cool, but it's it's so many different ideas that that you can express with. And I, I was talking about if you caught the live from last week where we were talking uh, technique versus well good technique versus uh, I can't even think what the other part of it was. But anyway, the point that I was talking about in terms of uh, the ideas that you come up with is like when we focus on 
expressing what our thoughts are concerning the song, people are more apt to connect. You, uh, you know, it's easier to connect with people when it's more of an expression rather than a technicality. There's so many, uh, not technicality, but being super technical. Uh, there's so many great, 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 great bass players and musicians that I hear, but there's some players that I look at the skill level and it's amazing. And I'm sitting like, man, this person is ripping. But it has all due respect. <laughs> it has no source of life. I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to be careful with my words. You don't feel it. It ain't got no soul to it. There you go. It, it doesn't have, and, and when I say soul, um, I don't necessarily mean soulful music or gospel music because that doesn't mean anything, you know, in terms of it's not from inside. It's just uh, something that I've trained my limbs to be able to do, my fingers to do very well. Execution is there. Everything is perfect. The timing, uh, the feel, um, well, I'm not going to say feel, but the, the timing of everything it, it, it it's even if they're copying a solo of somebody else because I see that a lot where people transcribe other folks solos but it's like they get all the notes right but there you go <laughs> MJ2 says no feel whatsoever you know what I'm saying it's like it, it's they get all of the notes right but it, it, it's not saying anything it's kind of like this is the best way I can kind of put it it's like uh I don't know if any of you guys grew up uh, like listening to Aretha Franklin one of my favorite <laughs> this is gonna be real um, funny for a lot of folks but one of my favorite Aretha Franklin songs is not one of her original songs it's the different world theme song if any of you guys grew up watching that show the way she sang that song I know my parents love me that, the way she sang it stand behind me come with me I know I said the right it's, it got so much soul and so much feel. And she's just thinking about going to school. Because I finally heard them say it's a different world Ooh, from where you come from. It's like that That was like, to me, one of the greatest Aretha Franklin tunes. I, I, I didn't really grow up on her music like that. I knew who she was. I heard her on some stuff. But for me, that A Different World theme, that little minute and however many second theme song, that right there. Yeah, y'all can have all the rest of the other stuff. That song right there, that song is another one. I'll I take y'all, uh, uh, I can't think of who the singer was that sung it, but uh, I'm old school. Uh, my parents, in the heat of the night, grandma and them, all of them, that, I watched all that stuff. So, in the heat of the night, what's the, uh, I don't know the words. I, I know. Must be an ending to it all. They do all of that stuff. It's like, man, that's just that's just got so much feel good. So it's like the way they're singing those songs, it had a lot of feel to it. Like you felt every note. And the guy that's singing, he didn't have a just to me, his voice wasn't just awesome. It's just the way he sang the song, the way he did what he did. So that, that lets me know that even uh, what most people would consider a mediocre player would probably shine, outshine a place, a person who would be considered a really, really phenomenal player because they know how to express themselves. I'm sorry. I'd rather listen to, just think of some... Uh, uh, <laughs> It's a lot of political unrest that's going on right now, and this is not a, a, a story of politics. I, I ain't the politics guy, but I hear they force these commercials on me, so I see all this stuff. I hear all this talking from these, you know, political heads. I'd much rather hear the same. If you're gonna tell me something, tell me in a way that sounds like you're passionate about what you're talking about. You know, say some words wrong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you're from the south, like slip some of that incorrect grammar in there let me let me feel where you come that don't make no sense right here now when you say something like that i feel like you mean what you said 
You know what I'm saying? As opposed to you trying to dot all your I's and cross all your T's. I hope you guys are getting what I'm saying with this. And all of this is related to your practice time. Sometimes we can perfect stuff to the point where it has no feeling. This is where I'm going with this. You can perfect stuff in your playing to the point that you suck all of the feel, all of the energy, all of the excitement out of it. And it's like, it's like, I mean, you played the notes. It was, I mean, you know, I much rather hear somebody who got a couple of notes wrong, but it felt good all the way through. It's like you, you're listening to them and you're on the sidelines and uh, they, they mess up. It's like, that's all right, Doc. Go ahead. Tell, tell your story. You know, that's that's kind of how you would listen to a person that's playing from the heart. Even if they miss a couple of notes when they're singing. It's like, I, I know what you were going for, so I can live with that. You know, I'm okay with that. Um, just the expression of it. One of, my, one of my favorite basses in terms of the jazz world, I got a lot of them. But one of my favorites... Uh, is uh, Jimmy Haslip with the Yellow Jackets. He takes his solos, and it's like I've I seen a few of the videos where he, you know, he's playing. Live. I've never had the pleasure of seeing them play live. Hopefully, I get to do that one day. I know he doesn't play with them anymore, but I've never had the pleasure of seeing them play live. But from the the stuff, the recordings and stuff from the time I was introduced to the Yellow Jackets and hearing their music, I could tell. There was probably some some head turning going on when he was in there recording that solo just by the way that the notes sounded. I could kind of tell what his uh, facial expression probably looked like. Well, you know, it's, it's some stuff. You know, when you do this right here, you hold your head up this kind of way. You you mean something when you do this now. I, I'm just, when you see like the gospel musicians and they doing, they just shaking their head, that, that means something to us, you know, when we're doing that kind of thing. So it's a different feel. We're connecting with it. And when you're connecting with something, you can't just sit there and just, you know, just play with no emotion whatsoever. Some your head got to tilt up just a, a little bit. When that thing hits you just right, you, it makes you tilt your head up just a little bit. So being able to not lose that in your practice time, I think, is crucial. One of the things I tell uh, some of my students in your in the coaching calls, like, yeah, I'm giving you an assignment to work on these things, but make time when you're practicing to have fun please make time on your instrument to have fun what y'all see me doing this more i'm having fun i'm making mistakes and everything but i'm having fun and i think the reason why most people uh lose interest in playing most people get discouraged they put the instrument down is because they lose the fun it ain't fun no more it's not fun anymore and and so i don't want any of my students or any of the people that I coach, I don't want you to ever lose the fun. And, and unfortunately, playing as a professional um, in a lot of these situations can suck the fun out of doing music in general. I'm just telling you the God honest truth. Uh, having done this for many, many years uh, as a professional, you, you sometimes it's, it's a gig to gig scenario where it, it goes from fun to look, I'm just trying to keep the lights on. And it's like, I'm just playing this. Never let any gig or anybody suck the joy that you have out of what you're doing. Now I gotta, y'all know where I stand. If you don't know, you about to. Never let anybody rob you of the opportunity to give God your all when you have that instrument in your hand. Never let anybody rob you of that opportunity to give God your all. We should hear your story through the way you play. One of my favorite guitar players, Eric Gales. I went to hear him a lot. I've been hearing about him and I've been listening to some of his music um, for years. I've been listening to some of his music for years in terms of clips and videos and all this kind of stuff, just blown away. But when I finally heard him live and saw him play live, whoo, it was a, it was a whole nother experience. Like it was just, it was very, you know, it, it, it was very, uh, if you've never seen him, it's hard to put in words. If you've never seen him play live, if he comes to your city or something like that, be sure to, um, be sure to try to go hear him because the way I, he talks through the instrument, he, he literally speaks through the instrument and you see all that emotion coming through that instrument of a person that's grateful and he has a really, really interesting life story. If you don't know him, uh, and I'm not going to try to tell his story, but he has a really interesting life story. And 
He doesn't have to tell you the whole story, but you see it, it coming through. You see it coming through the live. Uh, I'm not when he's playing, not the live, but him playing live. You see it, it come through the uh, his story come through his playing. So that's something like man, it's I'm I'm stressing this because I see a lot of people in this space teaching. Uh, bass players that are coming up how to do this and how to do that even myself I show you the, the riffs and the licks and all that kind of stuff because I know that's what you want to know but don't lose the essence of who you are in this instrument when you're playing all of this stuff all I'm trying to do is help you build your vocabulary so if you go to my channel right now you probably got more than enough licks to keep you going for the rest of the year but if you lose the essence of who you are and just trying to play stuff and just copying what I did like man you missed it you gon you go get you'll get work, you get gigs, but it can become meaningless. I'm telling you from experience. You can have the chops, you can have this, you can have that, you can have the ideal gig, but it will become meaningless to you if you lose the essence of who you are and what you're called to do with that instrument. Cause trust and believe, you ain't just doing it for fun. Once you start uncovering stuff, you start uncovering purpose in terms of like, man, I can use this for more than just getting a check, for more than just getting a gig. I can use this thing. When you start understanding that you can put smiles on people's faces, when you start understanding that you can reverse the idea of suicide for somebody through something that you play, you start to understand, man, this is some power that I got in my hands. And you start being responsible with that power to use it the right way to shift certain things versus just playing to get a check and, and playing to just say you played a gig or just played with this artist. Like, no, nah, I have the opportunity to change some things just by certain notes and the way that I express what it is I'm playing. So sorry about that little, uh, well, I ain't sorry about it. Uh, but yeah, anywho, let me read through some of these comments while I'll be here all night trying to get uh, get through that. Um, There you go, there you go. Floyd, uh, let me see here. I'm, I'm trying to go back up through the com uh, comments and make sure I'm picking up where I left off. All right, so appreciate it, Papa. Yes, sir, absolutely, I appreciate it. Uh, Mark Williams says, how could you outline the roadmap for learning the bass effectively? I've been doing it. That's what I've been talking about, effectively learning the bass. Um, I think once you, once you cover, now there are some ground rules that you need to cover in terms of uh, learning the what the stuff is, uh, if anything, you gotta know where stuff is on the bass. Don't overlook the simple stuff, and I, I just try to make this brief. Don't overlook the simple stuff like learning your fretboard. That's very important. Cause the, the freedom of covering this thing and, and expressing, I have to know where I'm going. Just cause you feel good about driving a car, don't get in there and, 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 and pull that thing out of gear and you don't know what all that stuff do. You know what I'm saying? You need to learn the basic, you know, functions of the car. The basic functions. Okay, this is the brake. This is the gas. This is this uh, the steering wheel. This is my signal, turn signal. You know, just in case it start raining, I know that I can turn this on. My wipers to get that going. If it's too hot in here, I know that's my air conditioner. I know that if it's too cold, I can turn my heat on. The basic basic functions of the car. I know how to open the doors. There are some basic uh, things that you should learn in terms of this bass. I need to know what my tuners are. I need to know how to tune my bass. I need to know um, the makeup of this bass. I need to know, uh, you know, in terms of uh, if I don't know how to set it up, I need to be able to hear that it needs a setup. I need to know when this bass is not in tune. Different things like that. So understanding the tuning of it. Tuning is very, very important because if we can't get past that, dude, that's that's you know, it's gonna have a, we're gonna have a hard time. Another thing I wanna mention is being able to Id identify the keys of songs. Work on ear training. Outside of all this technical stuff that people are teaching, which is good, I'm not saying it's bad, but ear training, don't forsake the ear training. You need to be able to hear. It, like, don't, don't jump down there and, and put a chord or play a lick over a chord and it don't match you know because you you're not listening for the chord and one of the ways i would uh suggest doing that is by learning basic chord functions you know um and 
I, I did I did a lesson on this talking about the major chord functions and I think we did the minor chord functions. Uh, if not, I know I covered it for sure in the Mark One membership lessons. But there is something here on my um, channel that we talk about just the basic major chord functions. Understand, I'm not going to get in those here, but those are some things that you need to know. Um, some people are gifted enough where they can hear this stuff, or some people are in, this goes back to what I was talking about earlier in terms of practicing with live people. If you're around it enough, you kind of start figuring out, okay, this, this sounds minor, this sounds major. Okay, if we're on the one, that feels like that's major. You know, if we're, we're on the four, that, that feels major. Okay, that seven feels like something else. I don't know if that's major right and so you start understanding like man that that sounds you don't you might not know the term we, we know it's diminished um but you might not know the term of it if you haven't really studied music or theory like that so understanding some of the basic groundwork that make up playing music playing the instrument it helps uh, i'm not saying you have to know everything because i i'm from an area where there are a lot of cats who couldn't tell you all this stuff some of the cats don't even know what key they play in but i get i guarantee you if y'all plug up, they're going to probably run you under the table. <laughs> they, they probably could tell you what key they were in, but they're going to run you under the table because they, they, they worked harder on training their ear. For a lot of us growing up uh, in the South, we didn't have things like uh, music theory. As, as simple as it sounds, depending on where you're from, nobody was talking about that. You just plug up and play. That That's kind of where I'm from so the ear training is a lot stronger so you have found a lot of those cats that might not be able to tell you everything that they're playing but because they hear and they understand it musically they can speak the language I got an understanding I might not can read and write but I know how to tell you what I'm talking about so that's what I mean right there they don't have any formal training but they know uh, all right so keeping it moving the director is good morning to you it's been a minute uh, it's been a while, sounding real good. Thank you, I appreciate that. If someone were to live stream themselves using your jam packs, would it copyright strike them? Absolutely not. I'm glad you asked that. Yeah, you can live stream all you want to with this stuff. It's um, it's uh, copyright friendly. Uh, the music, you know, is protected, but you're not gonna get a strike on the video. So any of this stuff that you hear me playing, you digging it, you'd like, man, that's dope. I want to play it. I welcome you. That's why I created this stuff because I know a lot of cats. One, one of the ain't that ain't the complete reason. One of the reasons why I did this. I know a lot of the cats were trying to post videos, and then they can't monetize the videos because the artist is claiming the 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 money for the video, so they couldn't monetize it. So it kind of takes the fun out of doing the video. It's like my video does really really well, and I can't make any money off the video. No, you can make money with these tracks. Matter of fact, the same tracks. I have on Shed Track. Shed Track uh, is a drum platform created by my bro that plays uh, the drums for Israel Halton. He created Shed Tracks, and uh, that's a platform for drummers. And basically, they're uh, the, the, the same tracks, but they don't have the drums on. But a lot of these uh, well-known drummers are playing to these tracks. They're posting them on their IG. They're posting them on uh, YouTube. They're monetizing these videos. They're making money off the videos. And so, like, once you pay for the jam packs, hey, you, you, as far as posting and all that kind of stuff, you're free to post whatever you want. Uh, you're free to go live and use all that stuff. Thank you, uh, Charlie. That was a great question, by the way. Um, <laughs> Popeyes is making that bass sing. Appreciate it, man. Um, yeah, when I was talking earlier, no feel whatsoever. Uh, say it, bro. I need to hear these topics. You're not playing from your heart. Yeah, if you're not playing from your heart, it, it, it I know you were just commenting what I was saying earlier, but yeah, it, it, it's, it's everything. Playing from your heart, uh, from the heart, and, uh, playing from the mind and not the heart. Yeah, it, it doesn't come across, doesn't come across as heavy. Henry says, uh, that was incredible. What is your approach or theory on doing feels? I'm going to talk about that here in just in case you weren't here. I'm going to talk about that on the Unlock Your Sound channel. Matter of fact, let me put that. I done had these jam packs up here for a good minute. Now, hopefully y'all got the link and y'all went and checked this out. If you're interested in these jam packs and you're interested in the instructional, you can see both of them there. Let me make mention of this because I've had some people to do this on the website. Uh, they'll buy the uh, jam packs and then they'll turn around and buy the instructional. So if you buy the instructional, everything is included. The jam packs are included. You don't have to buy the instructional and then turn around and buy 
the jam packs as well no so if you buy the instructional uh the jam packs are included with the uh instructional so you get the sheet music you get all that stuff so it, it's not a separate purchase uh but if you get the jam packs by themselves it does not include the instructional you see what i'm saying so that price you're paying on the website for the instructional includes includes everything you get everything in there you get my instructional video get the jam packs and and the sheet music tab all that kind of stuff if you need it um so henry hopefully hopefully that uh cleared that up for you well, well i didn't answer your question but yeah um yeah so aaron let me see i might can give a quick response uh, on or theory on doing the fields hmm looking for variations I take simple my theory is I take very very simple concepts and I apply I'll just give you my watered down theory um, I take very simple concepts basic concepts like major minor pentatonic uh, major minor scales I know way more than that but my ground level in terms of my theory behind it I take very digestible information and I find several ways to use that information I find several variations to use the same thing that way I'm not I'm not um, I don't get stuck when it it's time for me to really communicate because I think if you take bite-sized chunks and really find different ways to explore that is gonna really open up your mind to as to more things you could do and again I get more into this in our uh, in our uh, sessions next week if you're part of those sessions I'll get a lot more into some of the, some of this stuff I'm gonna get a lot more into uh, Aaron I appreciate the love man thank you uh, big Josh that's the lost art uh, I, I think I seen your uh, I seen your comment pop up when I was playing I can't remember what it was in context or what well, when I was talking rather I seen your comment pop up uh, locked in Carolina big what's up man uh, let's see I done missed all kind of stuff uh, music for Jesus if I didn't speak to you already good morning to you I haven't played in five months anymore that's what I wanted to get to uh, Big Josh says it wasn't fun anymore I know the feeling I know the sentiments of uh, it not being fun and you completely lose because life can weigh on you this thing is supposed to be an outlet uh, whether you play drums, whether you play guitar, bass, piano, whatever it is you do, that thing should be an outlet for you. This shouldn't, this shouldn't add to your stress. That's why I, another reason I want to do the unlock your sound. Or I'm doing the unlock your sound challenge. You shouldn't be stressed out playing music. That's an oxymoron. Playing music, anything else you do, playing, it's not stressful. So why should we be playing music stressed out? Why should we be play? Uh, stressed out when we're doing this thing called playing music so that, that's again one of one of the reasons one of the many reasons why I'm doing this unlock your sound challenge and uh, I will be doing this every month uh, but the first one is happening next week three days it's three days so if you've been wanting to get on my coaching calls and do more of a one-on-one -on -one style teaching with me this is your opportunity especially with you uh, the VIP people who get to do the uh, one hour zoom before we even start the general the general session will be a lot like this in terms of I'll be teaching and you'll have comments that are, that are coming up but if you want to ask specific questions that's more for the zoom uh, VIP uh, part of the thing so I encourage you guys to, to jump in this because my coaching calls I'll be honest are a lot more expensive expensive to do than because I don't have the time really to as many people that would probably want to do the one-on-ones I, I just don't have enough time in a day to do it all so this is your opportunity to be part of this uh, at a fraction of a cost uh, yeah so anywho I'm not gonna be the dead horse with that um, we use the in we use this instrument to display our sentiments of the sentiments of our heart I absolutely agree um, please is transcribing a bad practice absolutely not no transcribing is not a bad practice when I mentioned the uh, mark when I mentioned about transcribing and people transcribing solos from other people but it, it lacks to feel my thing is if, if you're gonna if you're gonna repeat what I said like my kids <laughs> if, if I tell them to say something say it how I say it you know if I'm sending a message uh, with all due respect there yeah, let's put that in there with all due respect say it like I said you know that's the way that people are gonna know how urgent it is 
if if I something happened to me, I'm doing yard work outside, and my kids are out there, and I said, "Go get mama," and they said, "Uh, uh, mama, daddy said, come here. Mama gonna take her time. I'm out there, something going on. She's not gonna be in a hurry to come see about me. But if the kids go and say it like I said it, mama, daddy said, come here." really quick you know they put emphasis on it the same way that i put emphasis on it well you're gonna feel what's going on something is not right but if i go and say it passively i repeat the words that you said but i say them passively they're not gonna have the same emotion they're not gonna have the same it's like when i heard that person play the solo he had a different little thing to it i mean he said the same stuff but it just it, it didn't quite do the same thing so you want to put the same passion and the same emotion when you're transcribing stuff as the person who played it and to me that's the best representation of that solo that's what that person meant if you're going to take the time to to transcribe what somebody did put that same emotion behind it like when you hear a person that's transcribing uh, Jocko it's like there's a certain emotion that Jocko played with that you could hear in his tone you could hear in his uh, going back to my guy that asked earlier about um, the uh, what was he, he asked more about the uh, Ah, what was it? I didn't have time to get into it. Um, Harry said something about um, articulation. The way that, and, and Harry, if you're still here, I'll give a brief, brief, uh, y'all getting extra today. I'll give a brief uh, idea of articulation. Articulate in terms of the way you feel. Don't try to be so technical with it. I was working on articulation and I didn't know I was because I was trying to mimic the voice. I was trying to mimic because I sing. So I was trying to mimic the way I sing. So if I'm doing, let me, let me get my Isabella out for, that's a, that's a better singing bass. No, no, uh, no hate to the Fender folks, but if I want to articulate, that's why I got these other little custom basses because I personally articulate better on those than I do on fender bases. I'm not saying I can't articulate on the fenders, but yeah, I articulate a little bit better with this uh, with this in my uh, six string, and I should have probably grabbed that. It probably been easier. Uh, let's see here. So if I, if I want to articulate something here, so if we go. <laughs> So if I go, um, let me think. Uh, it's early in the morning. Let me get in a different key. Uh, uh, so you see that articulation that I'm doing is based on how I'm trying to match my own voice. So I'm gonna have like different inflections in my voice and ooh, I can't get my run together this morning. Ooh, sorry, I'm running over the run. That's what I'm trying to sing. And if you can't sing, listen to somebody who can and try to mimic what they're doing. That's the short version. I'm not gonna get any more into that. I'm gonna keep it moving. All right, so uh, let's see here. Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? All right, so it's transcribing. I read that one. Music theory came after music. I memorized intervals, keys, and mm, dim augment. Okay, I major, minor, augmented with parts of songs. Uh, I use as references. Got you. Um, I did that in church. I went one way, and uh, <laughs> and they went the other. I, I don't know exactly what you refer. I've been talking about a lot of stuff, y'all, this morning. So forgive me if I don't know exactly the context of your comment. Uh, Henry says, "Yes, thank you. Sessions uh, next week. Did you already explain that? Yes, Floyd. Uh, I guess I didn't put that in the the chat. Let's see if I can put this in the chat again. Unlock your sound challenge. This is what this is, guys. I'm gonna be doing this. Um." The Unlock Your Sound Challenge. There's the link where I'll be teaching three days next week. This is, if you've been looking for a, a workshop, seminar type deal with me, 
here it is. I'll be teaching three days next week, and you can find more information. I probably the people that's been since I started probably tired of hearing about it by now. But hey, it is what it is. I didn't ask. Uh, Floyd did, so blame Floyd. <laughs> All right, so um, MJ Two says, "Cool, thank you, Jam Pack. I got you, got you." Uh, Myron Golden style, yes, sir. Uh, I really think that this will be an opportunity to change the way I play bass and really understand what I am doing. But my biggest issue is clarity, not sounding messy. I think that's a lot of us trying to make sure that we we don't sound messy. And that's the thing about in the practice room, making sure that this stuff that we're working in, like keep trying it. I didn't even get through all my songs, but keep trying it until we uh, we find something that we can land on. I think if I if I go live, I don't know if I'll go live next week. It's, I might not. And we'll see. We'll see how next week plays out. Um, but if I do go live next week, I'll try to go and, and do this again and um, talk a little bit more about some of these backing tracks. But if not, I'm, I'm definitely going to be dealing with a lot of this stuff in the Unlock Your Sound Challenge. So, look, this is just a, a sneak preview of some of the things that you'll get, some of the conversations that we'll have. But it'll be a lot more in-depth where we can dig into some of this stuff um, and, and really help you guys to really uh unlock your practice time unlock what you're doing on this instrument i i can't guarantee anything for you as far as you're playing because that's on you that's on the time that you put in but i can guarantee i'm gonna give you what i have and what i know that works i guarantee i'm gonna do that so anyway it's been really really fun this morning uh oh there's some more comments i missed uh play something are you late i've been playing Anthony, I've been playing, man. I played a lot today. My bad. Uh, Anthony says, less chitter chatter, more playing. See, that right there will get you blocked. I'm just going to tell you, that right there will get you blocked. Uh, can you go back and listen to the Unlock Your Sound? Can you go back and listen to the Unlock Your Sound challenge? I'll be at a con Yes, it'll be available. It'll be, uh, you can watch the replay uh, and... Um, you can uh you can watch the replay it'll be available for a limited time after we finish uh each session yeah anthony <laughs> anthony big mad yeah it's all right though anthony uh we we what we don't do here we don't we don't come now nah, we we all uh we all respectable and one of the things i i encourage in this uh grooves and motivation community we be respectful with our comments and i don't disrespect you you don't disrespect me we don't do that so let's 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 keep it keep it very respectable because I don't play for y'all I, I love to uh, share help and all that kind of stuff encourage motivate and inspire but what I won't be is uh, told to do something by somebody who doesn't know me or have a relationship with me just to be clear and we're off of that all right so anyway y'all uh, it's been fun and I've enjoyed it I hope and pray that you found something really really helpful out of this and if you want to hear me play uh, I encourage you to watch the replay. I played a lot in the beginning of this particular live. This is grooves and motivation, which means there's going to be a lot of talking and a lot of playing. So if you come back, maybe you could catch me playing at the beginning. Anthony, generally, uh, that's when I play. I play at the beginning of these live sessions. And uh, if you enjoy what you hear, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to uh, uh, check out some of my other videos where I am exclusively playing and I'm not talking. So, but this one, I'm going to talk. I'm going to always come on here and talk, especially live. So anyway, guys, I've enjoyed you. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, this has been a lot of fun sharing this information with you. And again, I hope you found something helpful. I got to go. And I hope you all have a great day. Much love to you all. Peace.